everybody. You may be wondering what I'm doing these days. Um, I am actually working on a bigger project on a uh, 3D, <coughs> 2D to 3D art project. Uh, but I'm also still doing my wood burning. In fact, I miss it. And as my 3D project is presenting me with some problems that I have to overcome, uh, I can't go too long without creating something. So I have uh, jumped in on doing a rattlesnake wood burn, which I have been itching to do for a long time. Now, if you look, this rattlesnake that you see right here is on my computer screen. This is, you can see me moving the pointer. Uh, and this rattlesnake is a western diamondback rattlesnake. And so uh, the full picture I'm going to zoom or I'm going to move back just a little bit so you can see. So this is a western diamondback rattlesnake. It's in a defensive posture. Um, and this animal uh, is uh, being traced onto carbon paper, I mean, excuse me, um, onto tracing paper on the screen. Uh, the tracing paper that is there uh, is, uh, I've gotten to right in this area right here uh, with my tracing and my hand's starting to cramp up. Uh, so all of the head uh, and the tongue and the eyes and, and all of the abstract has been done already. Uh, the pencil that I'm using is a 0 0.5, let me see if I can get that into the screen. Um, let's get it back a little bit. Uh, this is a 0 0.5 millimeter, 0 0.5 millimeter uh, mechanical pencil. And these pencils are key to your success when you're doing uh, what's called a transposition. And the transposition is where you're taking an image from a photograph, from a magazine, from <clears throat> whatever source, that you, as long as it's not something that's just coming out of your head, uh, any image that you are not directly drawing onto the wood, an image that you are transferring to the wood, that's a transposition. And this is really the key to getting great transpositions. And a lot of people like to use graphite. There's nothing wrong with graphite, but you'll hear me time and again on all all the sites uh, talking about the, uh, the the better use of carbon paper, which is what I generally use and I prefer. Uh, and the reason I prefer carbon paper is because graphite can be um, sometimes uh, a little bit a little bit um, nefarious. It can be rubbed off. Uh, it can have issues. It can smudge. There's a lot of things. Carbon paper is a little bit easier to, to make sure that you've got a good, good strong image. But the problem with carbon paper is that most people get it on too thick, they complain that they can't erase it, they can't do anything with it, and that's just not true. The first thing that you need to do is, of course, learn that your best friend for doing transpositions is going to be your mechanical pencil, because a 05, you don't want a 07 or a 03. Uh, 03 is too fine, and 07 is too big. Uh, you want a 05. 0 0.5 uh, millimeter mechanical pencil will allow you to do transpositions directly onto carbon paper and then from there you can put it you know you'll have it right onto the wood and it's going to keep those lines that you've got very very thin so uh, any lines that you've got you can see here I'm doing a tracing with this and uh, though I'm doing this tracing uh, the lines that I've got for my initial trace are very thin now this is a three stage process so this is an extremely uh, labor intensive process. It's not for everybody. There are easier ways or there are multiple ways to do this. Maybe not easier, but there are multiple ways to do this. Some of them a little simpler than this, but um, I prefer to do things uh, thoroughly. I think that good art takes time, it takes patience, and it takes a little bit of effort, and so that's what I'm working on right now is getting this to the point where it's just really, really a good solid piece. So what I'm doing is I'm basically, I'm coming in and I am tracing uh, general shapes and forms. Now you'll notice I'm not going exact. I'm not being, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm getting pretty close, but it's not a specific. I don't need to be right on the money with anything other than the base outline and, you know, some of the tighter details. This is a, uh, is, is kind of a forced perspective. So that means that some of the rattlesnake is in focus. The two parts that are closest to us, the head, uh, right in here. And, of course, the uh, front of the body right here, these, this coil right here and the head. These are your two focal points. Everything else in the background is a blur. So detailed uh, copying of the background isn't really that critical. It's more important that you are getting uh, your primary uh, shapes, that you've got your general, um, that you've got the general form. Uh, so just because these are a guideline. 
you don't have to do this exact. These are just to let you know where these color patterns occur and you can go a lot lighter when you're doing your transposition. So we'll talk more about that later but this is basically going to be uh, traced out. Once it's done it will be placed onto a piece of wood. It will be placed onto birch wood. I, I prefer to use birch ply uh, and then after that it will be cut out because I'm going to do this looking kind of 3D and then once it's been cut out and sanded and, and, and done to form, then I'll begin my wood burn. And so I will... Okay, so here is the rattlesnake wood burn in real time where I'm going to show you comparatively to uh, me how the size of this. So we've got this thing right here and um, as you have seen in the video how it's been basically done. I want to cover a few little points with you about things that I did. First off, of course, the tongue. Um, as you can see here, the tongue was actually um, originally done in birch it was part of the wood but birch in North American birch anyway is a little brittle so if it's cut too fine it becomes kind of uh, snappy and uh, that's exactly what happened it wouldn't hold that shape I wanted the longer uh, fork for the tongue and in order to achieve that I had to basically uh, cut the wood uh, from white pine which is what I did and so that's how that was achieved Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way that the burn turned out. I think it came out fairly well. Um, and I'm going to give you a few different pointers for when you're doing wood burning techniques, things that might help you along while you are trying to work on your different projects. So I'll give you some, some tips, a uh, little insider secrets. So the first one is if you're working with a solid point burner, we're going to show you how to do a great modification to a universal tip. It doesn't take very long and it's going to greatly enhance and change the performance of your tool. So um, I'll be showing you that here in just a sec. And uh, I think that you're going to find this very, very beneficial. Everybody that I've ever taught it to has been amazed by uh, just how much it enhances the performance of the wood burning tip. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to that part of the video. So this is a standard universal tip. You can see it's got a couple different components. This is a very uh, interesting tip. This was uh, designed by somebody at Walnut Hollow probably or somebody before then. Uh, Walnut Hollow is just one of the many companies that produces uh, 
different solid points. They're probably the leader, but they're not the only ones. But anyway, this is a universal tip. So some things about this uh, point. It has a couple different components. You have the uh, flat sides right there, as you can see, kind of flashing in the camera. And those flats are, of course, the flats. And then right in the middle of those, in between, you can see that there is a uh, that there's a knife edge, and that knife edge is used for creating really fine lines. You can get hair fine lines with that. Uh, on the end there, on the lower end of that angle slope, you, that's called the heel, and then you've got the point. Now, when you use this, and this is something I've taught to beginners for a long time, whenever you're using this, you're going to see that the knife edge, because of the heel and the point being so jagged, being such a sharp, crisp edge, uh, it tends to bite into the wood. So in order to avoid that, you're going to want to make a modification to this tip, and it's a fairly simple modification, but once you've done it, it is going to increase the way that this tip works tenfold or more. It's just a fantastic modification. So here is the modified tip I'm going to show you. I have the modified tip already in my burner. And as you look and see the modified tip, now bearing in mind that this tip in particular is probably due for a new one. I need to modify, you don't really need to modify it this, quite this rounded. Uh, but I have a tendency to use tips kind of to death. So uh, that said, you want, to round, you want to sand that tip on either side, on either flat. You're going to sand it down a little bit. And what that's going to do is that is going to round the tip and the heel. Ideally, you still want a little bit of a knife edge. Like I said, this is just an older, very heavily worn down tip. So uh, when I do my new modification, I will be rounding up uh, the, the knife edge, the tip, and the heel uh, on the back side of that little angle. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow this to work like a sled runner uh, going over snow. So if you can imagine when you're on a wood surface uh, with that, it doesn't bite, it doesn't it doesn't dig in, it just glides. So you'll be able to do all kinds of different shapes. You'll be able to do um, lines, you'll be able to do circles. You can actually turn around and use uh, use this wood burner. I'm going to show you here on a piece of practice board. I don't have the burner on, but um, I'm going to show you nonetheless how it's done. So if you're going to do like a circle, for example, if you were doing little circles like this, all you do is put the tip down kind of backwards and you'll be able to make these little rounded forms like this. Um, if you want to do straight lines of course you're going to use the knife edge and by using the knife edge and just dragging it straight forward you'll be able to make little tiny straight lines. Uh, if you wanted to create uh, shading you can use the flat and you can create shading. You can create both hard shading by having the temperature up or you can have soft shading by simply turning the temperature down and that's going to allow you to do various different tones like you saw in the rattlesnake. There are some areas uh, inside the burn where I've got it very very light uh, where these tones are, are kind of diffused. Uh, areas right here where it's kind of ambiguous where there's not a lot going on because this is a forced perspective. Um, but areas where you will need it darker, you can of course turn it up. And the way that you're going to achieve this modification for your tip, this is an old pad, but I've been using it for a long time, and they and they last for ages. I mean, they really do. If you're not like pushing down on this when your burner is hot, but this is a 3M uh, fine grit sanding pad, and what that is is it's basically a foam pad. It's not very thick, um, so you're about an eighth of an inch thick there. But it's a foam back pad. A little hair on it. But uh, it's a foam back pad, and uh, all you've got to do is um, just take your your burning your wood burning tool, and what you're going to do is basically you're just going to uh, you're just going to run your uh, tip several strokes this way, and then you're going to flip it over along the flat of the blade or flat of the tip, and you're going to run it several times in the other direction. So you're going to go back and forth like that over uh, the surface until you get that kind of rounded shape that we were talking about earlier and once you've achieved that rounded shape that's going to that's how you're going to enhance your uh, ability to burn. Try to do this when the burner is off. You don't want to do it when it's on. However, when your burner is on, you can very quickly come in, as you've seen by this old uh, pad, you can come in when it's on and uh, you can uh, very easily brush away any type of carbon buildup or any type of uh, ash or other buildup that you have on the burner itself, 
or on the on the tip of your burner. So it's a great way to clean your tips as well. And over time, you will wind up wearing down the tips. I mean, that's just how it is when you're cleaning periodically with something that's mildly abrasive. The good news is that these brass tips are fairly inexpensive. You can buy them in six packs, uh, either online or at craft and hobby stores. So getting a replacement six pack if you wear it down is not a big deal. It doesn't. It's going to cost you five or six bucks, four bucks, something like that, and uh, you'll be fine with it. So that's my pointer for that. And also, uh, I, I teach a lot of different types. I've taught wood burning for years, and I've taught all the different types of uh, points that come with these burners. But this is what I use for. 99.9% .9 of my burns is literally just this one tip. If you ever do have to remove a tip from your burner, however, you're going to want to make sure that you're doing so if it's still hot with a nice pair of small pair of needle nose pliers is going to do the trick. And you're just going to grab that tip right there at the base. So you've got it right here. Excuse me. There you go. And then you're just going to get a good grip on it and then unwind your your tip and so that's going to help out too. One other modification that I did to my um, to my uh, burner that I want to show everybody. Um, I don't know who designs these things but a lot of the people that design them are not necessarily the people who use the wood burning tools. So when you look at the burner the problem that it w uh, that you get with like the Versa tool when you get it standard from the store this temperature controller is not very far down on the uh, on the uh, burner. So what happens is when you are trying to control temperature, you have that temperature controller very close to your arm. And what happens is the temperature dial oftentimes, oops, temperature dial oftentimes winds up uh, getting in the way of the burner, and uh, a lot of times it's brushing up against your arm. And if you have a loose dial. Uh, then what happens is it will uh, wind up rolling this dial so you'll have it adjusting to different temperatures as it abrades against your arm. Now a simple fix if that doesn't bother you is to just take a couple of uh, really thick rubber bands, double them up and wrap it around that dial and that will keep it from shifting uh, and if you don't mind it bumping up against your forearm as you're trying to work then that's fine. What I did was I had an electrician buddy of mine just take, basically splice in uh, some uh, some cord from an ex from an old extension cord or older extension cord that I wasn't using. He spliced that in with some electrical tape, and that gives me a good extra uh, six feet or so of cord, and that's allowed me to keep this little uh, heat dial farther away from my burner than otherwise. So don't be afraid to modify your burner if you need to because it's going to make your burning life a lot easier and ultimately it's going to make it simple for you to do projects like this. My last little tip for you is going to be a very simple one as well and that is going to be how do you erase? I get this a lot about erasing uh, when you're wood burning. Say, oh well you can't erase uh, a wood burn. Actually that's not true. You can both lighten and erase and the way you're going to do it is by using a uh, an exacto knife. And so if you have an exacto knife you can actually do what's called tip scraping and I'll try to show you because I'm holding the camera with one hand. We'll try it through one of these dots. But basically you can see that there's a dot there. If I wanted to um, lighten this dot out all I've got to do is take the knife and then just kind of use the tip and I can adjust and modify so you can see here I'm I can adjust and modify so I can actually make a, a negative or a reverse I can lighten and if I do that and you're gonna look you'll see that this uh, little this little dot right there or this little scale pattern that I did uh, playing around with the practice board um, that that's already been lightened away and by doing that you can actually erase uh, you can you can lighten lines you can erase lines and it is the same technique for lightening that was done post burn right here where you see these raised ridges in the scales of the snake where it's got that lighter ridge uh, ridge line right there that's exactly how that was done so now you have a few little uh, chips and tricks that might help you while you're doing your burn um, I hope that this helps out. I hope that you have uh, I hope that you have a good time burning and I hope that you found this video useful and helpful. Uh, I wanted to give a special thanks to Eamon Anderson who composed the music 
uh, tracks that were on this video and uh, if you like his tracks there's going to be some information contact information for Eamon in the credits closing credits thanks for watching and when I make another one like I said uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to tune into that and I'm going to try to cover a little bit more with you and share more tips so thank you have a great day and uh, stay safe cheers <laughs>